Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all fandoms, welcome to the Ferret and Raccoon podcast episode 126. I am the Anki Raccoon, your only host for this podcast, unfortunately. And yeah, I'm bringing you technically the last podcast of October 2019. Uh, the main reason being is kind of given the fact that we do this every fortnight Technically, the next podcast, being 127, will be recorded during October, but it won't really be uploaded until November. So, yeah, this is unfortunately the last podcast. And uh, given all the stuff we're going to be talking about, not a really spooky one, technically. Although the things that I did over the last uh, fortnight technically were spooky and kind of fit into the Halloween theme, I guess. Uh, the two main films I want to talk about, which I did over the last I don't know, fortnight, like I said, was I finally watched the overhyped uh, Joker film that has recently been out, um, starring Joaquin Phoenix as joker essentially and i'll be honest it's okay i was pleasantly surprised watching this film i did come out enjoying it but i did not necessarily come out liking it and loving it uh like i hinted at before i think this film is really overhyped but i will not take away from the fact that i do believe there is some actual craft and some actual great stuff within this film um it is an interesting film that kind of dives into mental health and kind of dives into the frustration and society. That is kind of like a recurring joke that people keep keep making with this film is that it's about society and how society is this and that. And I'm not really going to, you know, start referencing memes because a lot of those memes are spoiling this film. So if you have not seen Joker, please do not look up any memes regarding this film because they like to spoil the ending. And speaking of the ending... It is my favorite part of the film. The last 30 minutes, uh, along with Joaquin Phoenix's performance, really saved this film. If it wasn't for him and the essentially last 30 minutes of the film, I would not have cared for this film. But I really did enjoy it. It has some nice moments of great cinematography. Um, the accuracy of the time period was okay, although you could kind of tell where there was CGI and where stuff uh, didn't really make sense in terms of uh, continuity and inaccuracies. But like I said before, there are some great things in this film. Not the best film ever, but I honestly enjoyed it for the most part. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, my voice was going there. I'm just uh, so excited about Joker or really the next film I'm going to talk about, which I guess you could kind of make some similarities between. I didn't watch them because of said similarities, but I essentially watched Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, this is the 1992 adaptation of Bram Stoker's famous Dracula novel um, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. I've been looking forward to seeing this film for a while, ever since I kind of read reviews and kind of knew the film's reputation, given that a lot of people find this film to be uh, somewhat over the top and a bit ridiculous, and that's mainly coming from the costume department for the most part. I remember after this film came out, this was like the main thing of people kind of saying it's ridiculous how Dracula looks or how certain characters are dressed and how certain things are very over the top the way it happens and although i completely understand that um i honestly really like this film i came out really enjoying this film as it essentially takes bram stoker's original novel about dracula which i'm not going to go into because it's an old story and you should really know the story of it by now or at least some kind of permutation of it um given it's been around for over a, a few centuries but yes I really like the kind of nightmarish, uh, dream-like kind of fairy tale vibe that came of it. It does really kind of hone in kind of more on the love relationship between certain characters and how it kind of tries to make certain characters more tragic, you know, their kind of final outcomes. And I did like that without essentially saying that, for example, Dracula is a misunderstood good guy who acts on bad things no dracula is still a demon which you can kind of feel uh some sympathy or understanding to given uh how he reacts to certain characters but i thought this film was fantastic for the most all the performances were great even keanu reeves now i know that i've mentioned keanu reeves everyone's gonna now go and watch this film because according to the world he only started acting in um uh, John Wick, and that's kind of like a meme film, so if you like Keanu Reeves, go watch that film, um, he doesn't really shoot a gun in it, but, you know, it's still him trying to do a British accent, uh, I know Win Winona Ryder is the in there as well, uh, Tom Waits, weirdly enough, I was shocked to see him play Renfield, 
uh, given that I mainly know him from a, a musical context, obviously. But um, really strong film. The costume and character designs, well, not really character designs, but the costumes and the characters, I really liked. I thought the armor that Dracula wears in the beginning was a bit odd because I don't really understand why anyone would wear that. But the way he looked and Gary Oldman's performance, no matter how Dracula looks, because Dracula is constantly changing his look. He's not just like a vampire or a crepid old man or a younger man. He's a demon or another speakable things because in this film they well this film is one of the more accurate adaptations of the original story so you do see Dracula do things that I guess is very uncommon for a lot of I guess vampire stories for the most part um one such instance um giving a very being a very weird and suggestive scene where all I'm gonna say is Dracula transforms into something and essentially attack someone in a certain way and the way he looks when that happens was definitely like whoa I didn't know Dracula could do that um, but I won't spoil it because it is very explicit and it is a you know massive spoiler but I absolutely love this film I definitely want to watch it again and kind of you know marvel over the craft of it Gary Oldman's performance once again was fantastic and I really did like this film but uh, definitely check it out if you've never seen the original Dracula film it was a uh, a, a real interesting experience. Maybe don't watch it with family, though. Um, let's move on to news stories and topics. And like I hinted at before, not a lot of Halloween-ish trailers or things to talk about. Not a lot of things, period, to talk about for the most part. I will be frank. A lot of the trailers that came out over the last few weeks were a bit whatever for the most part. And there were a few news stories that I was going to cover originally, but they just kept escalating and escalating and escalating to the point where they would really pretty much be the podcast in itself. And for those of you wondering, the the first main thing would be the fact that despite having uh, Sony's state of play, um, which I guess people were expecting for them to show off the PlayStation 5, they just randomly on Twitter announced that PlayStation 5 is coming out next year, which proved a lot of our and many other people's points what was the point of state of play if you weren't going to announce the playstation 5 there and you're just going to do it on twitter um it was just a brief announcement it didn't really give any details but uh it definitely is a very worrying sign that sony just randomly one day out of nowhere just went playstation 5 is coming get ready I don't really get excited over that. It's not to say that it would have been any better if they had shown it in the state of play, but it would have given the state of play some kind of uh, credit or point for the most part. And also, I was going to originally cover the whole situation with um, Blizzard Entertainment essentially uh, banning the Hearthstone player over the fact that he supports the Hong Kong riots. Um, this is a pretty big story, which is constantly evolving, and I'm pretty sure... Even as this recording goes on, it's going to develop even further. Even just this morning, more development has come. But uh, simply put, they banned a Hearthstone player who I believe was streaming on Twitch and essentially made a message supporting the Hong Kong protest against the Chinese government. And uh, Blizzard essentially came in and banned him, dethroned him, I believe, from his title and cash prize, saying that he violated their terms and conditions or something like that to which everyone is essentially assuming and you know pointing fingers at them saying oh it's because you have a large chinese audience and you do not want said large chinese audience to hate you because at the end of the day it's profit over integrity obviously they've come out and said it has nothing to do with the chinese market despite the fact that 60 percent of their profit comes from the chinese market so it makes sense that they would try and hide the fact that um, westerners and the rest of the world supports the hong kong riots and there's been further evidence of other companies essentially telling their employees not to mention said hong kong riots because it can um destroy partnerships with uh, chinese companies so it's a bit of a messy situation the only thing i will say about it for now without going into too much detail, is I'm really looking forward to uh, BlizzardCon, which is Blizzard Entertainment's uh, convention, which they hold every year. That's going to be real interesting for those hypocrites to stand on stage and go, here, buy our stuff, buy our new games. Real interesting to see. I honestly hope that they get booed, and I honestly hope that people hold up signs, you know, just saying Hong Kong, 
and just to see how the hypocrites themselves react. They'll most likely ignore it, but I would love to see them start removing people from the audience. That would be amazing because uh, Blizzard stock is most likely going to plummet over the next couple years. And uh, I am honestly glad that I've never bought a Blizzard game and probably never will because they don't really make anything worth playing. But enough of that. Let's actually move on to our very brief um, trailers. And the first trailer we're going to talk about is for Onward, which is Disney's next animated film. And a while back, they did release the teaser trailer for this film, which was extremely underwhelming, and it didn't really give me any sense of idea of what the hell this film was going to be. Yeah, I get it. Fantasy, modern day world. But I didn't really feel like it was worth covering or even making notes on for the podcast. But now we have the original, or I guess the full official trailer, and it looks rather safe unfortunately especially given the basis of the film for the most part now it's weird because it looks like they're going to be relying on like pop culture references you know parallels between our world and their world plus you know the opposite twists of like expectations and common knowledge on like you know fantasy and fairy tales um so for example you have um unicorns in this film which you know are you know, kind of seen as like graceful and calm and here they're like common rodents, much like the fox or the raccoon to some extent, you know, they're like hissing at the characters and they're like a pest, which is fine. And then you also have like fairies who are usually seen as well in fiction, or despite the fact, um, excuse me, uh, seen in fiction as like kind of being friendly, but here they're like angry bikers. So obviously it's really trying to, you know, break down the conventions of like fantasy and fairy tales. Oh, look, you know, it's just like our world which is all fine, it's not as if that hasn't been done in other films before, and it does kind of feel like Disney is a little bit late to the party, and even still it doesn't feel like Disney is doing anything interesting here, which is a sad thing to say for the most part, because I would at least praise their animated films for always doing something a little bit interesting, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more a little later, but really is kind of like a disappointment to see this film because one thing I'm not liking is the character designs which I feel are very unimaginative for the most part like what exactly are the main two brothers supposed to be is it like elves like I I don't really get it I understand what everything else is but I don't know what they're supposed to be if they're even supposed to be anything and regardless it feels like I've seen these like characters before for the most part um i honestly feel that what they should have done is if they wanted this new world to feel fresh and magical they really should have ditched the disney look for the most part because i've seen these characters designs before already i mean i can make parallels to the fact that the main character he looks like the uh, chef kid in ratatouille looks exactly like him uh, the unicorn looks exactly like the horse in um tangled you know and other parallels where it's just like a lot of the character designs look like rejects from monsters university it doesn't look like they've really tried to do anything interesting and it is a big shame because I honestly feel they should have looked at Zootopia, which, you know, crafted a creative world. I mean, granted the idea of animals, you know, anthropomorphic animals living in a society um, who can walk and talk and have a world, you know, kind of for them is not the most original idea. But what they did with it was pretty interesting where they thought of everything. You could tell everything, you know, had some kind of creative spark. And, you know, the characters themselves, um, Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde, they were characters that are really likable. And you wanted to go on this adventure with them in which they then further explored the world. So it was newer to them. Here, it just feels like you are being dragged along on a road trip with two very bland characters that you really don't even get a sense of personality. Like when the original teaser trailer came out, I didn't know they were brothers. I thought they were like classmates because the way it's presented, he kind of is just shows up at his doorstep and they're complete parallels, which is fine. Siblings tend to be complete opposite parallels, but I didn't get any sense of chemistry between these two. And even in throughout the film, it doesn't feel like these guys really care. 
And maybe that's, you know, the point of the film. Their world is so mundane that why would they be excited about things that we've never seen before? I get that. But they just don't seem to give a damn about anything. And I honestly feel like the dialogue and the jokes just kind of go on. The um, the guy who owns the van, I don't know what character or what his name is. I felt the scene where his brother was using the magic wand to make the um, gas tank grow... I felt that scene just dragged on forever. It was like, oh, if we make the tank can big, it will, we'll be able to refuel it. Oh, my God, the tank can's big, and this is big. And it's just like, oh, my God, we get it. You know, I, I was like, come on, let's do the shocking reveal that I'm small now. And I think even later on in the trailer, he turns into that weird um, uh, griffin beast thing, and he's just like destroying the store. And I'm like, oh, I can see that scene is going to just drag on forever. But it's a shame, though, because it does have some ideas, which I do kind of like the idea of, which is the fact that this story is might be possibly trying to handle the whole concept of like acceptance and death, which I feel is pretty interesting, especially for a Disney film to focus on bringing a dead person back from the grave, if that is what essentially ends up happening. And I think that if it's handled respectively, it could be emotional and impactful, but it might be a little too late if the film is more concentrated on, oh, it's fairies and they're bikers, which I'm not interested in. I'd rather have a film actually deal about, deal with, excuse me, um, family matters for the most part. That's why films like The Incredibles are held on such a pedestal because of what they did. Um... Yeah, it, it doesn't look like anything interesting, and I probably will skip this much like I've skipped the last four Disney films for the most part. Yeah, I wasn't even interested in Toy Story 4, no matter you know how good people say it is. It's just, um, I think Disney needs something really unique right about now, and this honestly isn't it. Um, let's move on to our next trailer, which is an animated film once again, and it's going to be for Klaus or Klaus, however you want to say it, basically Santa Claus, and this film has been in production for quite some time, and it's had a little bit of hype within the, I guess, animation community, um, I wasn't actually aware of this film, I was actually more aware of the art book than this film, so I was actually surprised, because I thought Klaus was just like, um, artwork inspired by Santa Claus, or something like that, but, um, this film, uh, looks really pretty, and I really hope that everything else within the film, other than the animation and the look of uh, the characters, is just as good. I mean, I will say this. Although the style is nothing I haven't seen before, it's it works in a way because the characters look nothing alike each other, which is great. Everyone is varied from like their body shape to their facial features, which adds a uniqueness to to this like character style which i think is great i mean go through the trailer and like kind of count all the characters that have like more than a few seconds on screen even the children they're like because obviously it'd be easy just to do like you know a palette swap or something like that even the children you can clearly see like features have been meticulously changed and each character feels like a different character so i'd imagine that um to some extent maybe each character will be memorable for the most part but i thought that was a really nice thing that you don't see a lot in uh, animated films nowadays. A good example of a film uh, being extremely lazy would be um, Illumination Sing. Um, if you watch Illumination Sing, which I do not recommend, um, you can see the same kind of, you can see the exact same character design like maybe six or seven times. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find that in uh, someone's review on YouTube, but uh, I did notice it where you kind of see the same character, but I'm repeating myself, which is you know, once again, a bit of a joke, but, um, it's nice though, I mean, I really like this weird kind of cell shaded soft shadowy look on the characters in the environment, it really adds, a, like, a cold festive atmosphere to the film, like, it really feels like it's winter time, and for the most part, it looks quite cinematic at times, and it also kind of looks beautiful, honestly, I mean, they were, how should I put it, um, they were, like, going for somewhat of a festive Christmassy look, I guess. I mean, a lot of the film does remind me of, like, Christmassy postcards to some extent. And that might have been the intention. Even the character designs, you know, are kind of of that, I want to say, kind of 
early 20s 60s kind of illustration in terms of like festive stuff so it kind of feels like they were going for that and i mean i really like the character movements that's i'm a big fan of the actual movement of animation for the most part and that's a very important thing uh, going back to onward i think it's just fine but here it looks really expressive without being over the top like characters are very animated and they move with a certain flow but it doesn't feel kind of jarring or unnatural like a disney film um a good example as much as i do like the film would be untangled the movements of rapunzel kind of do seem very unrealistic like no one moves like that not even not even if you're giddy with joy so it kind of does take you out of the picture but here they do feel great and you do see an impressive level of like speed in animation um for example, the scene when Jesper, who is the um, postman who you see, the slightly smaller guy, he's essentially running away from a water tower falling. And you just see like the animation just go from five to like eight just immediately as he does like that kind of movement out of the way, which is great because that's a good incorporation of like showing speed and showing like a sense of expression. It's great because it's very cartoony the way he does. He doesn't just move to one side. He runs and he bends his, you know, back forward. And it's great. It's a night edition. I really like it. Because, um, I mean, a origin story about Father Christmas or Santa that isn't focused entirely on magic, I think, is a really strong premise. Like, I know that I guess they kind of imply that there's magic and they kind of imply that Klaus is magical already, which does make me question like how is he magical you know um that's a bit bizarre hopefully there is an explanation for that to some extent i don't want it to just be he just is but um yeah it's really interesting and i really want to know what exactly or why exactly this town this hateful town or the most hated place in the world or whatever they refer to in the trailer really doesn't like this idea you have like this old decrepit lady who's like oh she's brain um, excuse me he's brainwashing the children which I don't really get that. I don't really understand how bringing someone joy is immediately brainwashing, especially if you are not hurting anyone or asking of anyone anything. That kind of just seems very backwards, and that's probably the point. But, I mean, I'm really looking forward to this film. I think the trailer itself was way too long, and it spoilt just a bit too much. So I would honestly recommend maybe trying to find a shorter trailer or maybe just looking up images or possibly just taking my word for it for the most part. But it looks really great. And there was one thing that did bother me as well, which I'm not going to slight the film on because I hope it's just a error that was in the trailer. And there's a point where the old lady, the decrepit lady, she kind of has a line and it sounds really kind of muted and it sounds like she's not actually there. It's hard to explain. It was an audio line that didn't sound right. But basically, listen for the old lady and tell me what's going on there. But it was it was, it was very bizarre. Um, moving on and staying with, I guess, lighthearted family films. This, this is a family episode, guys. Um, uh, we got Jungle Cruise, which is a trailer I've been looking forward to for a while. Ever since Dwayne The Rock Johnson was signed on to do Disney's Jungle Cruise, which I believe is based on a ride. So this is, once again, they're doing a ride turned into an epic adventure. And, sorry, excuse me. Um, yeah, it looks okay. It does remind me a lot of Jumanji. It does remind me a lot of Pirates of the Caribbean. It kind of has that um, very fast pace, wit, and action. It looks like it's going to be the kind of film that is pretty much appropriate for the family. You know, you've got some scares, you've got some fun stuff. And, you know, there was some stuff I did like in the trailer. I do like the fact that both main characters are extremely competent at uh, combat. That does kind of remind me of, like, The Mummy to some extent. The original Mummy, not the awful one that came out a few years ago. The one with Brendan Fraser. And I did like the fact that it's a little bit more of a uh, con job for the most part. Like, Dwayne Rock Johnson, he's kind of got, like, all these, like, special effects and practical stuff to, like, kind of make it a little bit more of an attraction or a theme park uh, ride to some extent which is a nice kind of callback to the actual attraction ride in Disneyland's um you know and there were some nice bits of dialogue I like the fact that when the I guess natives uh, essentially shot the blow darts they almost hit him and he was kind of just like oh come on you know what I mean and like, oh sorry my bad I thought that was a a pretty cute line because it would make sense and a few of the other lines with him constantly saying like he's going to raise the price and all that kind of stuff 
interested to see how this film is going to end because they do kind of have a little bit of a cliffhanger where they show this weird monster animal combination guy and i thought that was interesting i have no idea what the hell that's going to be um once again it reminds me of a villain from the parts of the caribbean film so that's going to be interesting i mean not a film i'm going to watch but it looks competent enough that it's not something that i hopefully won't hate and we'll see how it does i mean I've been looking forward to seeing this film, and I was not disappointed with the film, but I'm not looking at this film as if it's high art. Um, And yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up the podcast for the most part. Um, Sorry it's so brief, it's just, I just, there's stuff I just don't care about, honestly. There are some generic trailers which I really don't want to talk about, mainly because I have nothing to say about them. And I personally like for this podcast to be kind of like a personal thing, whether it's just me or other people. And I just don't want to be talking about things that are worthless or things that you listening might not even care about. So hopefully this podcast was informative and enjoyable. Um, The only thing left to talk about is the video of the episode, which I'm going to keep Halloween-ish themed, though it's not really that spooky. But I honestly feel it kind of harbors the spirit of Halloween or the fact that it's getting darker around the world now. And that is going to be um, the music video for Earl Sweatshirt featuring uh, Vince Staples and Casey Veggies with Hive. Now, this is a pretty dark song. It is a rap song, just in case you don't like that. And I feel as though the way and the mood of this music video, as well as the song itself, but the mood and the, let's just say without spoiling it, the characters that are there definitely kind of have a sort of like teenage somewhat rebellious dark somewhat depressed vibe and i do really like the flow of this music video and the way things look and i do like the somewhat amateurish approach of this music video it's a really nice video this is definitely Earl sweatshirt in a very early stage in his career if you listen to his newer stuff now it's definitely a little bit more progressive a little bit more experimental very dark and very depressed Earl sweatshirt is a very depressed sounding rapper and you'll see that through a lot of his visuals and a lot of his music which definitely i mean his uh, second to last album was called i don't want to leave the house or something like that a- an album by all sweatshirt and even his uh, more recent album was just called some rap songs and it has a very hilarious album cover but um hopefully you guys enjoy this music video hopefully it uh, carries the spirit of halloween for you or continues it um, in terms of next podcast, I have uh, two discussions, which I think are going to be pretty fun, lined up for November. And I have a few TV shows which I've been watching and somewhat enjoying, which I'm going to be talking about in full as they will be finished or I will have finished them uh, by uh, podcast 127. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up this podcast. We are at the uh, final stages of 2019, and I believe there is about four to five podcasts left to record, which is quite scary if you think about it. If you think about it in terms of how many podcasts are left, yeah, we're almost done with this year. So I'll end this podcast like I always do by saying I was the Angry Raccoon, and I will see you on the next podcast.